Yo, what's going on, Geminites? It's your boy, Gem Mint. I'm here with an updated video for every Spider-Man Omnibus release so far, so stay tuned. Alright guys, so this video was one of the first videos that I've done on the channel. It was the first every Omnibus video, and I started with it because Spider-Man is one of my favorite characters, and he had the most Omnibus. And it ended up hitting like 50,000 views, man. So that first video did really well. But a lot of people have been asking me to do an update because there's been other Spider-Man Omnibus that have been released since then. Plus, we upped the production uh, quality of the channel. We do overhead shots of the pages now. And it just looks way cleaner. So I thought I would do an update. It was heavily requested. So here we go. There are 19 Spider-Man Omnibus currently out right now. And there are two honorable mentions that I'll throw in around the time where they fit in chronologically. But a lot of great classic material covered in these omnibus. We'll start with Amazing Spider-Man Volume 1 by Stan Lee and Steve Ditko. This is the first omnibus that I ever bought, but I had the first printing, which I just got rid of, and I picked up this fourth printing because it's the same thickness as all the other volumes. The, the first print was like a phone book. But this is where it all started for me. Um, at the time, I was collecting CGC key issues, and I used to think, man, it would be nice to be able to read these. So I picked up like a Marvel Masterworks trade paperback, and then I found out about Omnibus. So this Omnibus collects Spider-Man's first appearance in Amazing Fantasy 15. Then it also collects Amazing Spider-Man 1 through 38, Annuals 1 and 2, Strange Tales Annual, and Fantastic Four Annual number 1. Let's take... Uh, a good look at the inside of the pages. All right, so let's get the overview of Amazing Spider-Man Volume 1. I like when these books have all the covers on the back, so you can see them all here from Amazing Spider-Man 1 all the way to 38 with the annuals. I didn't really want to mention cover price on these omnibus because that can vary. A lot of them have cover prices from $100 to $150. But if you buy them when they're brand new, you can usually get them for up to 50% off. If they go out of print, then you cannot buy them for 50% off. And you have to try to either find them for cover price at your local shop. Or you have to pay over cover price on like eBay or Amazon. So I don't know if it really matters for me to mention the cover price on all these books. So, um, just a black cover. Spine matches the actual dust jacket. That's how it's going to be on these first... A uh, few volumes. What's cool about these old school omnibuses is that they collect all the letters pages from the original issues. So you get Amazing Fantasy 15, which actually had, I think, like three stories in it. And the Spider Man story, I think, was like just the last story in there. But I like how you get it recollected i mean if you were to pick up an af15 now it wouldn't be this crisp as far as the colors it would be dirty dingy faded any one of these silver age books so it's really cool to see it's presented like this probably better than it was even originally released on like that newspaper type of paper you know so there's all the early spider-man stuff i like these how you get the cover of the issue you get, like, like I mentioned, the letters pages on the back. You get the lizard. You get a ton of first appearances, man. I mean, basically all of his supporting cast and rogues gallery is in this volume. I mean, the vulture, the lizard, Dr. Octopus, Green Goblin, J. Jonah Jameson, uh, Electro, Mysterio, Craven the Hunter, the whole Sinister Six comes together in the first annual. So, classic material, very important book to have as a Spider-Man fan, even if you can't really get through Silver Age reading, or you're not really into the art. For me, it was always important on the origin of the characters and where they come from. All right, Amazing Spider-Man Volume 2, Stan Lee and then John Romita took over on the artwork here. This picks up right where Volume 1 left off. You get Amazing Spider-Man 39 through 67, Annual 3 and 5, and you get the Spectacular Spider-Man 1 and 2, which were like those magazine-style issues. This was the first print. 
I ended up picking this up shortly before a reprint was announced. So I think I paid like $150 for this. And then the second printing came out and you were able to get the same book for cheaper. But now I believe the second printing is uh, out of print as well. The cover of Volume 2, forgive me if I'm wrong, but I believe this is the first John Romita uh, work on Spider-Man with Amazing Spider-Man 39. Here goes the back. So you can see you get the first appearance of the Rhino, first appearance of Mary Jane, first appearance of Kingpin, some classic stuff here. See, this is a first print, so you still have that like leathery type of feel with the silver. Not like the um, the fourth printing that I just showed you guys of Volume 1. You get a nice table of contents, which a lot of modern books uh, fail to do now. I think this was also the first time that we find out that the Green Goblin is Norman Osborn. And I think this is like the death of Norman Osborn, but like, you know, not really. Really good splash page. Boom. First Mary Jane issues with Rhino. Get some Avengers and Daredevil tie in. Letters. First appearance of the Shocker. I hope they continue making these volumes up right up into the uh, Roger Stern omnibus. I think that would be really nice to to have them all. Your boy, the gem pin. Then he goes like that magazine um, style, oversized, black and white, spectacular Spider-Man issues. I never read those actually. All right, then we have volume three. Again, just picking up right where volume two left off. You get Amazing Spider Man 68 through 104. This is the highly sought after direct market variant cover, which is the classic cover of Amazing Spider Man 101, which is the first appearance of Morbius. Still Stan Lee, but John Romita is joined by uh, John Buscema and Gil Kane for the artwork. Let's go ahead and take a look at Volume 3. All right, like I said, uh, that Morbius cover with six-armed Spider-Man on the dust jacket of Volume 3. What do we got in the back here? You got the, the drug issues that were not approved by the Comics Code Authority. You get the anniversary issue of uh, Amazing Spider-Man 100. Then obviously, like I said, the Morbius stuff with the following issue. So, you know, we're seeing Spider-Man evolve from the Silver Age stuff of the 60s to the Bronze Age of the 70s. Spider-Man in college. Still has some Kingpin going on. Spider-Man wanted run. Some dope artwork right there. Shocker returns here. John Romita Spider-Man, very prominent. Yeah, the lizard back in action. The Prowler. Looks like the prototype for Ezekiel. <laughs> the kangaroo. See, all these comics are approved by the Comics Code Authority. That means that you couldn't have, I guess, like R-rated themes. You know, you couldn't have like sex or drugs or things like that. So I guess um, they ran with these uh, Harry Osborn on heroin issues, so it wasn't approved by the Comics Code. See, there's no thing here. I think it's like three issues or so that deals with that storyline that it wasn't approved. Which I guess is like the mature rating for video games and stuff like that we have now, you know? 
Volume 4 is the most recent Spider-Man omnibus to come out, and it picks up right where Volume 3 left off, collecting Amazing Spider-Man 105 through 142, Giant Size Superheroes 1, and Marvel Superheroes 14. You can see they went with Amazing Spider-Man 135 for the cover, which is the second appearance of The Punisher, uh, Stan Lee, Jerry Conway, John Romita, Gil Kane, Ross Andrew. And this is the last volume that continues... Like Amazing Spider-Man 1 through, you know what I'm saying, 142. A lot of new omnibus collectors get frustrated that it doesn't just collect like this forever. It ends up jumping into creative teams. And I'll kind of talk about that a little bit when we get to some further omnibus. But basically, this is the last volume so far to collect the uh, Spider-Man run straight through. I always try to go for the DM variants because I like the covers to match the material that's on the inside. I don't like a lot of the... Uh, Modern covers that they try to do for these omnibus. Especially this for this volume. So looking at the back, I mean the stuff that I'm familiar with is obviously like the death of Gwen Stacy and the Green Goblin. The first appearance of Punisher. Uh, second appearance of Punisher. The other stuff I'm not as familiar with. Um, let's take a look at it. So volume 4. Got your table of contents there. That's a cool splash page. Spider's Web. Spider Slayer Jonah. Type of strange stuff. Craven the Hunter. So you actually get a whole kind of interview by Jerry Conway about Turning Point before um, issue 121. Green Goblin stuff, Death of Gwen. Death of Green Goblin, yeah. Very important Spider-Man stuff. First appearance of Punisher and the Jackal, who ends up becoming responsible for the Clone Saga. Some Tarantula stuff there. Punisher back. Was that the Grizzly? All right, I threw in Untold Tales of Spider-Man uh, right around this part. It came out in the 90s, but this was meant to take place in between issues from the Silver Age. So um, I still haven't read this book, man. I, I used to have a lot of these single issues as a kid, but it's um, Amazing Fantasy 16 through 18. They continued the title in 95 uh, from the original 63 uh, volume. Untold Tales of Spider-Man 1 through 25, uh, Negative 1, Annual 96 and 97, and Strange Encounter. Plus it has material from Amazing Spider-Man 37. I guess the whole point was you're getting updated art and you're getting kind of stories uh, that you didn't get that took place during those early years of Spider-Man. I like it when these earlier omnibus would play around with the colors too. Like you have this red leather um, hardcover with the blue shiny foil logos and, and letters there's a couple of other ones like this but uh mostly they're either all black like i've shown you or um have like a wraparound cover but let's take a look at the artwork of untold tales all right untold tales yeah there's another cover for this too that i i don't remember what it looks like curb music here's what the covers look like on the back i remember having like this mary jane one i remember these covers the red book very cool I like Kurt Busey too, man. 90s art. It's 
So here they renumbered Amazing Fantasy. Well, not renumbered. I guess just continued it. You get like a kind of a painted look artwork here. That's only for these Amazing Fantasy issues, though. Then here goes Untold Tales issue one. And this is the type of artwork you get. Kind of McFarlane inspired. It definitely looks like that Maximum Carnage Bagley era as well. The Tom DeFalco edited era. era. See, I like how they draw them there with the webs like that. You gotta sit down and read this one day. Doc Ock. Next up, we have the Spider-Man by Roger Stern Omnibus. Uh, Roger Stern, uh, for me, mostly known for the Hobgoblin saga, but so, so, so we kind of skip right because. Amazing Spider-Man Volume 4 goes up to issue 149. This collects Amazing Spider-Man 206, 224 through 252, Annual 16 and 17, and Spectacular Spider-Man 43 through 61 and 85. So, for whatever reason, Marvel started to decide we're going to make the Omnibus a complete collection of a creative team. So, Roger Stern wrote all of these issues. As you can see, he didn't write some issues in between. And um, and they, they decided to start collecting them like that. I say the Hobgoblin Saga, but the Alien Symbio Saga is probably what he's most known for. Which, um, this volume ends with the first appearance of the symbiote. This one is not the DM variant. I got this, um, because it's been long out of print. I got this from my local comic shop uh, for cover price when it was selling online for much more. Uh, let's take a look at the art. So, yeah, this picks up kind of the numbering where we left off with that volume four. Roger Stern takes over on Spider-Man, and we get, like I said, the Hobgoblin stuff, the beginning of the symbiote um, alien saga. Traditional kind of black cover. Roger Stern with John Romita Jr. I like old school John Romita Jr., the first cover he did was with his father for the first appearance of Hobgoblin, which, it, which was issue 238. Spectacular Spider-Man, I, I didn't really like. I feel like, I guess it was more Peter Parker based than Spider-Man. So I wasn't too interested in Spectacular Spider-Man too much. I mean, he has Spider-Man in there as well. You get Prowler. A lot of text, but it looks like that's a retelling of the origin again. Jack O'Lantern. See, a lot of people want a reprint of this, but I don't know if it's necessarily because of the material or just because they want to have it in their collection because it's looking kind of boring. There's that 238 I was talking about. I like this stuff. Finds Green Goblin's weapons cache and becomes the Hobgoblin. <laughs> Wave check. This looks like two fifty two. No, it's not. Here's two fifty two. Boom takes place after Secret Wars. 
Spider Man shows up with his new costume, finds out it's alive, and then we get eventually get Venom. I've got a couple trades that are really cool the uh, complete Alien Saga. All right, so continuing with the theme of collecting a creative team's work, this is The Amazing Spider-Man Omnibus by Todd McFarlane. Uh, this is a must-have for Spider-Man collectors. This collects all of McFarlane's work on The Amazing Spider-Man title, which starts Amazing 296 and goes through 329. Um, first appearance of Venom, you get the return of Spider-Man wearing his original costume. And you're getting McFarlane art. I mean, at this point, McFarlane was given free reign to do whatever he wanted. And he just brought in all the villains that he liked. He got Scorpion, Rhino, Mysterio, Lizard, Hobgoblin, Green Goblin. I mean, Captain America, Sabretooth, Red Skull, Hulk. He, he brought everything in that he liked because he was killing it. This um, was a huge whale. It ended up getting a reprint. I think we bought a reprint and did like a giveaway for it too. But, um... A must-have McFarlane Spider-Man Omnibus. There is another cover with the black um, suit on the front, which is the more sought-after like variant cover, but I wanted like the regular cover for this one. All right, definitely a fan-favorite era. Todd McFarlane jumps on the Amazing Spider-Man run. Totally um, changes the way we view Spider-Man with his big eyes on his mask, with the spaghetti webbing, with the very small lines in the costume. We get him jumping on uh, at the... At the end of, I guess, uh, the Alien Symbiote Saga for Spider-Man. And then, boom, in issue 300, the Symbiote goes to Eddie Brock, becomes Venom. Venom, uh, he goes away after that first appearance, and he doesn't come back until, like, 15 issues, 16 issues later. With the Hydro Man, and then he comes back. And then Todd McFarlane does whatever he wants in Spider-Man until they give him his own title. So you can see this is a first print because it has that more leather-type black feel to it with the... With the silver title. The new one has like that flatter black. I always like this one. Green Goblin versus Hobgoblin. It goes McFarlane Spidey. Still get a table of contents here. He always does all the details in the faces and the fingers and everything. He actually is redoing that cover and two ninety nine for the new spawn issues. Yeah, that's how, how he drew Peter. Mary Jane. There goes Venom. And the return of the regular costume. Sandman. Silver Sable. Action Comics number one. Cover homage. Lizard cover. Iconic Spidey shot right there. That's classic McFarlane look right there. Saber tooth. Look at this Hulk. He started on Hulk. Marvel, um, Hulk was the first title he did on Marvel. After Todd McFarlane left, uh, he went to do his own Spider-Man run, which we'll talk about. And then Image, uh, Eric Larson picked up, and they gave him his own omnibus. This collects Amazing Spider-Man 287, 324, 327, 329, and 350. And then he jumps onto McFarlane's Spider-Man title to do issue 15, 18, and then 21 through 23. Uh, he jumps back in the second volume of Amazing Spider-Man where it was renumbered and does issues 19 and 21. Then there's material for Marvel Comics Presents 48 through 50. Um, and then back to that Spider-Man title that was started by McFarlane to do issues 19 and 20. So you get like David Michelini uh, writing this, um, as who also did the McFarlane stuff. And Larson just kind of picks up and continues with the Venom stuff. He... Um, he gives us the Cosmic Spider-Man. He gives us the Return of the Sinister Six. He gives us the first appearance of 
Cletus Cassidy, who later becomes Carnage, and uh, Eric Larson is a fan favorite. He had a very exaggerated style for Venom, which kind of uh, expanded on what um, McFarlane and Bagley were doing. But this one is uh, the first time we start to see uh, graphics on the hardcover instead of the all black or maybe like all red or whatever. But uh, let's take a look at Eric Larson's Omni. All right, so like I said, Eric Larson picks up with David Michelini still writing Spider-Man. It goes the covers on the back. It actually also has that same issue there. But it was like another return of the Venom story where Venom thinks he kills Spider-Man and that's how Spider-Man gets away from him. And then it jumps a couple years to some more modern stuff. I know you guys remember this Deathlock um, Spider-Man cover. So this time the hardcover has the same image as the front of the dust jacket. But the back they give us the return of the Sinister Six um, picture. I read this kind of, when it came out, it was right before I started the channel, and I read this. I think Eric Larson was a good um, person to pick up artwork from McFarlane. I mean, it kind of had a similar vibe to it, but he definitely added his own stuff as well. Cosmic Spidey. We got the Punisher team up, Black Cat. Here goes the return of Venom. The Marvel Comics presents Wolverine stuff. I don't really remember reading that. Eric Larson did a good Sandman. Is it Cardiac? That's where we get the Cletus Cassidy intro. There he goes right here. I always like this cover. I, I had that um I had mine set to CGC back when I was doing all that. I think it came back like a 9-2. MJ and Lingerie. What? Who's that solo? Huh. <laughs> Shoulder pads and art in full effect in the 90s. Here goes Deathlock. I always like Deathlock. And then, like I said, the Volume 2 Amazing Spider-Man stuff. Alright, next up. This is my favorite Spider-Man omnibus. And I put it here because it, um, it double dips with the McFarlane uh, omnibus and the Larson omnibus. It collects four issues from each. So... Eight issues out of this omnibus are collected in those two that I mentioned. But I think with this, you get the best of both worlds, plus you get Maximum Carnage. So you get Web of Spider-Man number one. You get the first appearance of Venom. And then you get those McFarlane issues, like issues 315, 316. And then you get um, right directly followed up by the Larson Venom stuff. But then you get... Uh, the first appearance of Carnage in that first trilogy, 361 through 363. Then you get uh, the three-part series, Sp uh, Spirits of Vengeance, um, or Spirits of Venom, with Ghost Rider, which I love. Then you get the Marvel Comics Presents Wolverine and Venom. You get Amazing Spider-Man 375, the foil gold cover that leads into uh, Lethal Protector. And then you get Maximum Carnage. Like, you can't ask for anything more. Definitely my favorite Spider-Man omnibus definitely the best wraparound cover on any omnibus i love this um, wraparound i have the poster in my desk the original gatefold poster from the comic book um and we're going to show the inside but look it even has this uh, spider-man special that you had to order in for i believe definitely my favorite book let's look at these issues for a long time <laughs> all right like i said my favorite spider-man omnibus if anyone asks me what spider-man book they should pick up this will be my recommendation it's got McFarlane's uh, ASM-13 cover, but with a different color in the background. Spider-Man vs. Venom. You can see what you get here. Um, Amazing Spider-Man 258, which really just shows um, Peter Parker's struggle with the symbiote. Early symbiote um, appearance in Web of Spider-Man 1. First appearance of Venom. Then the first big battle since that first appearance. Then you get the Eric Larson Venom return storyline. 
You get some little dark, uh, dark hawk issues. You get Carnage, the trilogy. You get the the Spider Man uh, vs Venom special. Spirits of Venom, uh, two is it Tooth and Claw or is it just Wolverine vs Venom? I forget. ASM 374, 375, and then boom, you get the 14 issues of Maximum Carnage, followed by Amazing Spider-Man 400, I believe that is. No, that's not 400. What is that? It has to do with Peter Parker's parents. Again, you get the uh, the best wraparound cover in all of Omnibuy. <laughs> so, I think that's Mark Bagley. I think it's Bagley. Looks like Bagley. He's got like a McFarlane-style Venom, but... um cleaner more uh i don't know more defined shaped i would say always nice you just get that cover right there boom those are some eyebrows on your boy eddie brock what the hell that's how mcfarland did them oh, so it looks like they give us the little uh synopsis from secret wars 8 that's cool then like i said here asm 252 where Reed Richards figures out it's alive. Oh, then you get Bagman, Spider-Man Fantastic Four costume. I always like these painted covers here. This web of Spider-Man 1. Dealing with more symbiote stuff. Then you get Venom, Return of Venom. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, not Return of Venom. This is uh, from Amazing Spider-Man 298, and then this is from 299, which is the, like the first cameos, and then boom. First full cameo, and this is the first full appearance of Venom. At this point, he's just wearing the costume, but not the symbiote, because Eddie Brock has it. I think ASM 316 is like my favorite cover of all time. I like how they kind of did this symbiote at the top. That's pretty cool. So this omnibus is cool, because you're getting McFarlane, you're getting Bagley stuff, you're getting Larson stuff. Some of these tie-ins are kind of like whatever, but I guess they were technically early Spider-Man vs. Venom battles. Qua you get Quasar 6. I mean, was that necessary? Yeah, look at that. That's a Larson Venom jaw if i ever seen one. But yeah, then to collect Maximum Carnage in the, in the back. Well, first of all, the first appearance of Carnage... Uh, here's the second part. There's part two of his storyline that's called Carnage. So we get the early... You get all the early Carnage stuff, man. Definitely has got to be my favorite um, omnibus. I want to read just these three issues of uh, Spirits of Venom real quick. Or Spirits of Vengeance, whatever you want to call it. I need to read this omnibus again, man. Because I haven't read the Omni. I've read all these issues. I've had all these issues as a kid. Love how, I love that how that Venom looks. Him working out. Yeah, that two-part story is dope. That ends in, like, the truce that leads to um, Lethal Protector. Look at this. You gotta love that, that Venom grill right there. Then you get Maximum Carnage. My boy Doppel. This was like an inspiration for the statue phase too, man. The snarl. One of my favorite de depictions of Venom. You gotta buy this omnibus. If you're a Spider-Man fan and you grew up in the 90s like me, this is a must. Let's see what extras we get in the back. That's the trade I had. That is like the first trade paperback I ever owned. I think I got that and Death of Superman at like the same time. And that's a. Uh, this was like the reprint of it. I had the first one. I had these second prints with the gray backgrounds slabbed in 9.8s with the first prints, too. Then you get the trading card stuff. I think that's awesome. Marble Masterworks 92. I mean, Marble Masterpieces 92. 
So these are going to be my two honorable mentions for every Spider-Man Omnibus release so far. They're not Spider-Man Omnibus, but they're Ven Omnibus Volume 1 and 2. And I really wanted to mention this because after that Spider-Man vs. Venom Omnibus, where you get uh, Amazing Spider-Man 375, Spider-Man and Venom make a truce, and Venom becomes the Lethal Protector. And that is where this Omnibus begins with Lethal Protector 1 through 6. And then you just get all those... Of 90s Venom miniseries, Funeral, Funeral Pyre, you get um, Sinner Takes All, Venom the Madness, uh, then you get his appearances in uh, the Ben Riley stuff. Volume 2 gives us Planet of the Symbiotes, um, Along Came a Spider, The Hunger, License to Kill. Like I said, all those 90s Venom issues that you used to see on the spinner racks back in the 90s are all collected in these omnibus. Also, some of my favorite books, but I'm just going to keep them as honorable mentions here for um, this one. I'm not going to flip through them. We'll save that for the time where we're able to do an Every Venom Omnibus release so far video. All right, so for beginners, I know this can be kind of confusing. So Todd McFarlane was doing The Amazing Spider-Man. He did those issues, 30 issues or so. And then Marvel gave him his own title, just titled Spider-Man. No adjective in front. And he wrote and drew these first 15 issues. It's issues 1 through 14 and issue 16, because I, I mentioned before, Eric Larson did issue um, 15. Uh, this also has X-Force 2, because that ties in with the last issue he did on here, where they're all um, vertical on the pages, which we'll show when we come through. But it's a thinner book, but um, it collects McFarlane's whole run on this title, mostly known for the artwork, not as much for the writing. But when you're dealing with McFarlane's Spider-Man, you're dealing with one of the best who, who ever done it. So definitely a, a must-have for collectors as well. Let's take a look at some of this uh, art. All right, so McFarlane breaks away from David Michelini, writes his own Spider-Man stories, and uh, draws them as well. It's a thin omni, like I said, 15 issues, which are all iconic. This f uh, first cover of Spider-Man, I, th I think it's one of the highest-selling um, comics under like Jim Lee's X-Men 1. I love how he did a cover homage to it on issue, I think, 13 with the symbiote. I love those issues. He did Ghost Rider, Wolverine stuff. And then he had that X-Force tie-in with his boy, Liefeld. Then you get a wraparound cover. It looks like it's updated color on it, though, with McFarlane pencils. Very dope. I mean, like I said, this book, you're in it for the artwork. Not that I... I actually, I don't mind McFarlane as a, as a writer. I mean, I love the early Spawn stuff. I think it's cool. His Spider-Man was dope, but his Peter was always a little bit weird to me. That sounded weird. His Peter Parker. I love how he drew Scorpion and Lizard. and That's Lizard, but I guess he drew Scorpion and Amazing. You know, McFarlane was always good at beasts and monsters and sharp teeth and claws. Like, that was always his thing. Spider-Man all beat up. I remember as a kid, like, Spider-Man was always getting beat up. <laughs> Spider-Man looking thick AF. Brought Wendigo back, brought Wolverine back, big belt buckle. You know, we rocking big buckles over here. Yeah, I like McFarlane's Wolverine too, though. The belt is a little big, but... And here goes the X-Force, the two-parter that ties in with X-Force, that they're all um, flipped sideways like this with Juggernaut. I think Marvel's made him censor this, where he where he stabbed Juggernaut in the eyeball, like right here. I think it, he showed it originally. I remember seeing him post something about that. And then here goes the X-Force issue. Just continues that same story. Love these Marvel collectible classics chromium cover ones, man. I used to have them in 9.8 as well. This was the front and back of the book. So in a slab, it looked dope, man. All right, now we start jumping into some Clone Saga stuff. There's two omnibus that collect the Clone Saga. 
some of this stuff I can already see double dips with an omnibus stuff but you're gonna have that when you collect omnibus in these type of formats either creative teams or sagas um, you're, you're gonna have some double dip so uh, the clone saga I remember coming out in the 90s I was still picking up spider-man books as a kid so I always liked the clone saga I love the artwork at the time a lot of Mark Bagley um, I loved Ben Riley spider-man and um, a lot of a lot of older readers at the time really hated what they did with this storyline especially at the end when they tried to say Ben Riley was the original and Peter Parker was the clone that really wasn't a good idea anyway this first volume collects issues of uh, web of spider-man issues 117 through 125 amazing spider-man 394 through 401 spider-man 51 through 58 spectacular spider-man 217 through 224 spider-man unlimited 7 through 9 spider-man funeral for an octopus 1 through 3 and the clone journal plus material from spider-man collectors preview this was a very long saga, man. I mean, this was split up over so many different Spider-Man titles. Volume 2 picks up on Amazing Spider-Man with issues 402 through 406. And then it has um, Planet of the Symbiotes as well, just like the Venn Omnibus Volume 2. But then you get um, Spectacular Spider-Man 225 through 229, Web of Spider-Man 126 through 129, New Warrior 61 through 66, Spider-Man the Jackal Files, and then you get Maximum Clonage, Alpha, and Omega, which I always love those covers, man. I bought that in like a five-pack that they used to sell in like toy stores, where it was like kind of like the foil type covers. Uh, picks up with Spider-Man Unlimited 10, Spider-Man Team Up 1, Spider-Man The Lost Years 1 through 3, and Spider-Man The Parker Years. Let's take a look at these one at a time. I know I kind of brought them out together because they're like a little set, but there's our uh, Clone Saga. All right, so volume one of the Clone Saga has um, Spider-Man, Peter Parker, Gwen Stacy, and the Jackal on the cover of the dust jacket. All the issues, of course, that you get in the back. Let's see if I can remember anything here. I think this is the first appearance of Ben Riley as Scarlet Spider-Man. Or the Scarlet Spider. There was issue 400, Death of Aunt May, which obviously didn't last very long. I like how we get a Venom symbiote um, wraparound cover on this with Spider-Man and Scarlet Spider. I think for me, I'm like more of a fan, uh, a fan of the artwork during this time. You got Kane there, another clone. It didn't bother me about clone. I'm like, come on, it's comics. They do crazy shit like this all the time. But this is like my preferred style of art where it's still hand-drawn and hand-colored. No computer art or, or coloring streak. I just like the style of the 90s art the best. I guess because that's what I grew up with. <laughs> that was like a chrome foil issue, I remember. The Jackal messing with Peter Parker and Gwen Stacy's lives, man, with the clonage. This was... Uh, the first issue where it's Venom versus Scarlet Spider. That's the first person that he has to go up against as like, as being Scarlet Spider. Yeah, it's a four part series. He had those impact webbing bullets he would shoot. Vulture and the Owl. There goes that Daredevil. Is that that Born Again or is that Shadowland costume? I guess I like Scarlet Spider had the big white eyes like the symbiote without the black border around it. She was so wet. She was like an old lady in an android body or something. It was Doc Ock's girl. I remember reading all these issues, man. I like this stuff, though. Kane used to always scar in people's faces. All 
All right, so Volume 2 does round out, like, the clone saga, and then Peter Parker goes away. We end up getting Maximum Clonage, and we end up getting Planet of the Symbiotes, which kind of just happens around that same time. And I guess Ben Riley deals with it rather than Peter Parker. So not a wraparound cover, but you get some graphics on the hardcover. I always like this one. These were all covers of the trades, too. So you get more of the same in this book, but I like it. You know, it continue, continues the Clone Saga up until uh, Ben Riley breaks off and becomes Spider-Man. Still dealing with Kane. This is where we end up getting that spider side and all those clones that they end up fighting. This is, um, this looks like Planet of the Symbios right here. The Jackal Files. You got all these clones. Yeah, I guess that's where they get a little bit crazy. But I did love me that maximum clonage little run. Following up on the Clone Saga, then Ben Riley, uh, Scarlet Spider, takes over as the new Spider-Man. That's what we have here, the Ben Riley Volume 1. I would assume this is going to be a two-volume series because it, it's the same amount of content as the Clone Saga. I used to have all the trades. It was like 12 trades in each. So I'm guessing six trades is an Omni, so there should probably be a Part 2. But you're getting Web of Scarlet Spider 1 through 4, Amazing Scarlet Spider 1 through 2, Scarlet Spider 1 through 2, Spectacular Scarlet Spider 1 through 2, Scarlet Spider Unlimited 1, Green Goblin 3, Sensational Spider-Man 0 through 3, uh, Wizard Mini Comic, Amazing Spider-Man 407 through 410, and Annual 6, Spider-Man 64 through 67, New Warrior 67, Spectacular Spider-Man 232 233, Spider-Man Punisher Family Plot 1 and 2, Spider-Man Holiday Special 1995, Spider-Man The Final Adventure 1 through 4, Spider-Man Unlimited 11, Spider-Man Team Up 2 and 3, and material from Venom Along Came a Spider 1 through 4. So a little bit of more double dipping with the Venom Omnibus. I, I enjoyed it. I have read all those trades that I mentioned, so I've read this whole saga recently. I, again, I love the artwork. I love the little characters. Like, um, man, what is that one guy's name? Um, Spider Side. I like the Jackal stuff. I, I like so. I love. I love the new Spider Man costume. I always wanted to see a, a statue made out of that. Um, but yeah, man, Spider Man Ben Riley Volume One. All right, so like I said, two volumes of Clone Saga. There should be two volumes of the Ben Riley Saga, which um, has him as Scarlet Spider and then becomes Sensational Spider Man, taking over for Peter Parker. While Mary Jane is pregnant and Peter Parker is trying to no longer be Spider-Man. So we get that stuff. We do also get Venom Along Came a Spider. Then we get that sensational Spider-Man, which didn't last that long. Uh, and we get the Spider-Carnage stuff too, which I loved. With Carnage bonds with Ben Riley. Wrap around new Spider-Man hardcover. Sensational Spider-Man. Love it. There's still some variants of those issues, man, that are kind of expensive. They were like low print run variants with the white background. I always wanted to collect those. I wonder if they have those collected in the back of this book here. So you see he's Scarlet Spider here. Then you get the Good Green Goblin, which I think is like Norman's grandson, if I recall. You know you're in the 90s when Scar Scarlet Spider-Man's got the Uzi. There he is as Spider-Man now. Yeah, Punisher and Tombstone, more Venom. That's this is Center Takes All. She Venom. Yeah, here's the variants I was talking about. I think there was four of them that connected that whole spider together. Or surfer stuff. Oh, is that what the whole um, 
Carnage Silver Surfer. That, it was a what if issue that became a real issue. No, that's not that. trays I was talking about. All right, here's another omnibus that was recently released. This was the uh, J. Michael Straczynski, John Romita Jr. Spider-Man run. This is like the second half of the renumbered volume two. So you get issues uh, of Amazing Spider-Man 30 through 58. Then it picks back up on the original numbering and you get issues 500 through 514. Uh, you get a lot of J. Scott Campbell covers here. I did recently read this and do a review on it, so if you guys want to check that out. I would say this run is mostly known for the first appearance of Moreland, the, um, the Spider Totem storyline, Ezekiel, um, the 9-11 issue, uh, Aunt May finding out Peter Parker is Spider-Man, and like the return of Peter Parker and Mary Jane, so probably the most notables from this. All right, the early 2000s, Amazing Spider-Man, J. Michael Straczynski, John Romita Jr., J. Scott Campbell cover arts, white spine to mess up the feng shui. <laughs> Here goes the covers that we get. Like I said, second half of what's considered Amazing Spider-Man Volume 2. The wraparound cover, which this kind of takes place during a time travel kind of thing that Spider-Man's going through with Doctor Strange and Dormammu. But you get the introduction of Moreland here, who is... Somebody who feeds off of the energy of uh, totems, or is it just spider totems? I don't even remember. But it, you know, it plays with the idea that there are other people who who have these spider powers throughout time. This guy Ezekiel kind of got it the wrong way, and the supernatural powers that be are trying to check this wrongdoing. But they go after Spider Man instead of Ezekiel, which is kind of his plot, so that he can still be the head CEO of his company and have these powers. Here's the 9-11 issue. This was a um, crazy issue, man. Aunt May finds out Peter Parker is Spider-Man. She's dealing with that. Mary Jane comes back from California to be with Peter. I guess they were split up during this time. You have some wacky villains here and there, like this kind of Mafia boss who was made out of five dead mafia hitmen that were killed in a radioactive waste plot of the ground or something. Whatever. Ezekiel. Oh, and then you get the story at the end where Gwen Stacy's kids come and she ended up having twins with Norman Osborn and just some crazy shit. All right, then we're jumping into uh, Ultimate Spider-Man Omnibus. This is labeled as Volume 1, but there has not been a Volume 2 in sight. This is the uh, Brian Michael Bendis, Mark Bagley reboot of Spider-Man. And they basically took Peter Parker, they put him in modern times, and they kind of, uh, and they did, a, and they rebooted it, really. This is all happening right around the time that Sam Raimi is doing the uh, original Spider-Man movie, and it's heavily influenced by this book. This collects issues 1 through 39, as well as Ultimate Spider-Man 1 half. I'm actually currently reading the oversized hardcovers that complete the rest of this um, story because it doesn't look like they're going to be coming out with any more Omnibus. But hopefully I'm wrong. They ha There have been announcements of a new Ultimate Omnibus, so maybe they're, they're jumping back into the Ultimate Universe, which is no longer uh, a thing in comics. All right, the Spider-Man reboot that actually spawned an entire alternate universe for marvel the ultimate universe ultimate spider-man volume one like i said collects issues one through 39 you get all the covers on the back uh, volume two has not come out yet and the oversized hard covers that complete the run some of them are out of print and go for like 200 bucks by themselves so hard to kind of get this whole run and collected editions to read But yeah, this is like the storyline that put Bendis on the map. Mark Bagley with a um, modernized style, not the Bagley that we remember from the 90s. 
like I said, retelling of Spider-Man in modern times because in the original Spider-Man run, he's a kid in the 60s. So now in this run, he's a kid in, I guess, what is it, the early 2000s? The year 2000? Inspired by the movie, and actually, uh, after this volume, I think it's in volume like four or five of the oversized hardcovers, Sam Raimi and um, Tobey Maguire are in the book, and they're shooting the Spider-Man movie in this universe. And, you know, Spider-Man's pissed because he's not getting paid anything for it. They're just kind of taking this vigilante from the streets and making a movie out of it. Green Goblin's the big, big bad, and he's like a Hulk slash abomination type of Green Goblin. He's not like the guy riding the glider that we know from uh, the original series. I read most of this omnibus on a plane on the way to and from New York for Comic-Con last year. Kind of funny. Those goblin. Okay, so they did end up uh, publishing the Death of Ultimate Spider-Man omnibus, which collects Ultimate Comics Spider-Man 15, and then it gets renumbered 150 to 160. Ultimate Comics Avengers vs. New Ultimates 1 through 6, and Ultimate Comics Fallout 1 through 6. Ultimate Fallout 4 is the first appearance of Miles Morales, and that's who we end up getting to become the new Ultimate Spider Man in this universe. You get, uh, for the first time, we're seeing an all white on the bus here with the red foil. Uh, pretty sad cover of Peter Parker with his Uncle Ben, who's kind of more like a hippie in this run. <laughs> And I guess Aunt May is kind of as well. She's the cool mom. Or aunt, I should say. So the ultimate Spider-Man run goes to issues, I don't know, like 134 or something like that. And then they retitle it Ultimate Comics Spider-Man. And I guess they did that because at this point, you had the whole Ultimate Universe with Ultimate X-Men, uh, Fantastic Four, the Ultimates instead of the Avengers. You get Ultimate Comics 15, but then they decide to go back uh, after issue 15 and pick up where ultimate spider-man left off uh, it would be one issue 150 through 160 then they have two mini series including ultimate fallout like i said which introduces miles morales so this was this was the death of uh ultimate spider-man peter parker and i remember this was happening right around the time i got back into comics and started reading single issues it had a black bag issue which was supposed to i, I, don't, get, I don't know if it was supposed to be but it reminded me of the death of superman issues from the 90s I don't think its impact was felt. Everybody just felt like it was kind of cheap because it was an alternate version of Spider-Man. It was the ultimate version. It wasn't the real one or whatever, so who cares? But uh, it happened, and it got us Ultimate Spider-Man, which ended up... I'm sorry, Ultimate. It got us Miles Morales Spider-Man, which ended up being a pretty popular character. And even though they said they would never merge the universes, they do end up bringing Miles into the... 616 universe the main universe and they they get rid of the ultimate universe and then uh we lead into miles morales the ultimate spider-man so like i said he takes over being spider-man after the death of peter parker in the ultimate universe and this collects ultimate comics spider-man 1 through 28 and 16.1 spider-man 1 through 5 where he meets the spider-man from the 616 cataclysm ultimate spider-man 1 through 3 ultimate spider-man 200 Miles Morales, The Ultimate Spider-Man 1 through 12, and material from Ultimate Fallout 4. I'm sure it's a recap of his first appearance. So, it used to be Ultimate Spider-Man, then they changed it to Ultimate Comics Spider-Man, and then they changed it to Miles Morales, The Ultimate Spider-Man. So, that's kind of why you get all those different Ultimate titles. This omnibus is notorious for having binding issues, uh, where the, the pages aren't glued to the ribbon, I do plan to fix this, although I tried to fix my Marvel Zomnibus and it didn't work. So, got to go back to the drawing board on that. But um, I actually am going to do a review on this pretty soon. So, check out for that. So, after Ultimate Fallout and the death of Peter Parker, Miles Morales, who was also bitten by a radioactive spider, picks up the mantle of Spider Man. And we talk about the binding of this book because you can see all the pages are sewn together. But they're not glued to this ribbon here like they're supposed to. And you can even see the grooves in that ribbon where they should be, but they're not. There is a method to use like binding glue to fix that, 
And I've tried to do it on another book, but have been unsuccessful. So I'll probably give it another shot. Nice wraparound cover with Green Goblin, who is the one who kills Ultimate uh, Comics, Spider-Man or whatever, Peter Parker. I, I did read these issues. I, I used to get these um, in single issues as they were coming out. I remember him dealing with uh, his uncle, uh, who's the Prowler. I remember these issues. Dealing with this guy, Scorpion, who was like a jail guy. There he is right there. He looks so young in these ones. So yeah, man, he got super popular, and um, you know they made the, their, their own movie, the animated movie, into the Spider Verse, and I think he still has an ongoing with Marvel now. Miles is it's almost like a reboot of the reboot. It's like okay, now we're in modern times. Let's make Spider Man happen again as a kid and dealing with the powers for the first time or whatever. All right, next up, um, I'm not a fan of these next two omnibus. I just don't care for them. Superior Foes of Spider-Man. Why not just give us the Superior Spider-Man omnibus? I mean, this is like um, a little uh, offshoot of Superior Spider-Man. And yeah, Nick Spencer, I mean, it's it's funny. It's a good written, a well-written book. But I just don't really like those books that don't have any consequences or any stakes. It's just a, supposed to be just a fun read. But for me, it wasn't even really that fun. But it collects um, issues 1 through 17 of the Superior Foes of Spider-Man. If they don't hurry up and solicit uh, Superior Spider-Man, I'm just going to custom buy my oversized hardcovers because that's ridiculous. All right, Superior Foes of Spider-Man was uh, an ongoing uh, series that kind of took place around the time where we had Superior Spider-Man, Doc Ock, and Peter Parker's body uh, after issue 700. And Nick Spencer wrote it. I guess Nick Spencer is like, people either love him as a Spider-Man artist or hate him. This run is pretty much um, well regarded. Like, people feel like it's a good read. I Again, me, it just wasn't interesting enough. It's like C and D list villains that hang out together and they're losers. And they're always getting their ass kicked by Spider-Man. And I don't know. I'm just not interested in those characters enough to have them watch them live out life like losers. So, whatever. No uh, big implications to the overall universe. I guess it's funny at times. I don't know. It's just not really my cup of tea. All right, last one. I'd hate to end it on a, a low note, but this is another omnibus that I don't know why this was published. I mean, Spider-Man's Tangled Web. I've never even heard of this. Uh, I guess it collects uh, Tangled Web 1 through 4 and Spider-Man's Tangled Web 5 through 22. But um, this is like one of the only omnibus that I've ever read that I just gave up reading. Like, what is the point of this, man? I, I just did not enjoy this book whatsoever. Who does this? A ton of creators. Look at the, look at the amount of creators. There's like 30 people that worked on this book. I don't know. I don't know why this was published. Again, <laughs> hate to leave this on a sad note, but if, you, if you're not a obsessive, compulsive collector like myself, go ahead and pass on this one. Uh, Spider-Man's Tangled Web. I preferred this cover over the um, the variant. The variant was this cover, which was like black and white, so I wasn't really a big fan of that. I think. Yeah, this is the other one. I don't know. I don't know what the deal with, with what this was. They are just kind of like offshoots of Spider-Man. It almost reminded me of a... Uh, see, I like... You have this kind of like horror aspect to it. It reminded me of like... Uh, Edge of the Spider-Verse before the Spider-Verse storyline and that aspect. I don't know. Maybe I should give it another shot one day. I might have my bookmark in here still somewhere. Let me see. Uh, maybe not. A ton of different artists and writers. I don't know. Just... I don't know why this was made into an omnibus. I have no idea. Maybe the uh, the guy in charge of the omnibus... Uh, Department was was friends with the guys who made these issues or something. Look. All right, guys. So that is the updated video for every Spider-Man omnibus release so far, plus the Venom omnibus honorable mentions. Let me know what you think about these omnibus in the comments below. This is meant to be like a visual checklist of all the omnibus. So if you're out here collecting, you can come back and check to see if you got all the books. Um, if you are interested in picking one up, hopefully flipping through the pages and talking somewhat about the story helps you guys make a decision. Uh, hit me with any questions that you have in the comments below. 
Um, before you comment, you don't have this book in there. Make sure you look to see when I publish this because this might be a year old by the time you're watching it. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for more daily content, more videos like this. Plus, we have a ton of other content that we publish every single day. Hit the like on the way out. Show some love to your boy and stay minty fresh. Peace.